Hi, and welcome to another Old World Exploration. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at some Romanesque style city halls of North America, uh, particularly zoned in on the city halls. Um, and tried to target this uh, Romanesque style, but there will be a few of other styles in there. I just could not admit them. They're, they're magnificent structures that are worthy of the spotlight. Um, but let's let's get a little bit of backstory on what uh, Romanesque architecture is all about. Um, particularly in uh, North America, in the States, Richardsonian Romanesque architecture, uh, named after architect Henry Hobson Richardson. A uh, quick peek into the gentleman. Um, this is what we have um, as far as um, what this man looked like. Only really a handful of sketches and photographs. Um, I always find this one interesting. A handful of these, how he liked to dress as some sort of uh, monk or wizard, something like that. Um, but really immortalized with this style of architecture. Let's uh, not waste any time and get right to the buildings themselves. Um, these are intended to have been built with some sort of permanence, a lot of stone, a lot of granite, um, and really magnificent architecture. So here we begin with Albany, and this was designed by Richardson, we are told. A cornerstone laid by a local Masonic fraternity, 1881. Building completed, open two years later. Okay, that's very, very short turnaround for building time, even for for uh, this period of time that we live in now, considering the building materials. But uh, you'll find that pattern repeats itself throughout. Um, so Albany, and we will take a little bit of a closer look at many of these city halls and. Um, the, especially the ones that still stand. You can see here all the little faces in the architecture and the detail going on here with the uh, way the stone has been uh, assembled. And also you get a sense of age uh, from some of these, these photographs, modern day photographs. Albany. Next we go to Bay City, Michigan. 1892, local architects Pratt and Kip Cope were hired to design the structure, looking almost identical to the previous structure. Uh, 1894, Cornerstone Lay completed summer 87. Sorry, 97, 1897. Small town at the time, 27,000 people, Bay City. There it is, still stands, still looking quite permanent and uh, strong in its foundation and don't forget of course windows but, um, a lot of times going right down to ground level and we sometimes see some access into lower areas so um, here again looking old charred possibly even um, potentially much older than a hundred plus years um, reminding me of some that we see in areas of Europe that have been attributed with a, uh, a longer shelf life, shall I say, several hundred years. On to Brockton, Massachusetts. Romanesque revival structure designed by local architect Wesley Ling Miner, built 1892 to 94. Two years to build this in the late 1800s. Same population as Bay City. Brockton, Massachusetts. And there we get a bit of a look at the interior. Um, easy to overlook that. Um, the interior on many of these buildings. And when we take a closer look and we do get some of the visuals, um, we really get a sense of the splendor and the construction of these buildings. And then we have to really marvel at these construction time frames uh, as it would be, it would take a ridiculous amount of time to finish the interior of these buildings in such a manner. They're giving you another snapshot of that area, similar area, possibly some changes made, an older postcard, but you get the picture. Keep in mind so many of these structures all going up right around the same time period all over the place. Buffalo. Monumental granite structure designed by Andrew Jackson Warner, constructed between 1871 and 1875. 
Hmm. Very, very early on uh, for your window to create such a magnificent structure. And of course, don't forget the statues. Uh, on to Calgary, um, Alberta, Canada. Um, supposedly completed in 1911. Sandstone structure. Uh, there you have a cannon. Interesting. And looking very, very similar to many of the other uh, structures we see. Here we have a modern day photograph giving you a sense of the building materials. Of course, you have to have these little, um, what, octagonal cupolas positioned strategically in the roof area. Charlottetown, PEI, Canada. This one kind of obscure. I have to dig pretty deep for this one. Um, built by a contractor, William H. Fraser, beginning in 1887, completed in 1888, according to the historical narrative. So about a year to build this in the 1880s. Oh look, there's a basement. Cincinnati. I did a video on the city. Um, if you're interested in the area, take a look at that video. Uh, this building supposedly completed 1893. We have a cost for the building. I like how specific they get with so much of the costs of these. Designed by a Samuel Hannaford. Uh, population in 1890, 296,000 people. Quite the city um, at that period of time. Cincinnati have having uh, multiple breweries and uh, a lot of old world infrastructure. Here we see what it looks like in the modern day. You, again, you see the styling repeat itself. Remember, not designed particularly by um, Richardson, but really no visual difference um, between the construction of these and the ones attributed to him by name. And if I could just slip on my tinfoil hat for you, I will suggest that what we're looking at are old world structures with placeholders, mostly Masonic figures, things like of that nature, um, put in as the uh, architects of these buildings uh, in a historical distortion attempt that we are currently unearthing. Here we have the interior of the Cincinnati City Hall and well would you look at that is that a marble um, balustrade system um, done in such an early time period and don't forget the stained glass Hamilton Ontario Canada uh, you're noticing maybe here no real visible separation between what we're seeing on the on two different sides of the border in North America as well so maybe an indication there that uh, the historical narrative uh, may have a few errors in it. Maybe there's more to the story. Um, built 1888, 1892 years to put this thing up, 1800s. Knocked down in November 1961. Had to get rid of that. Probably just a compromised foundation. <laughs> or so they often say. But if you look a little closer, you can get a real feel for the age of this building. And if you use your eyes and remove the lies you may be able to detect that uh, there's more to the story and the historical timeline stretches further back with uh, technology and abilities that we have been told were not there at the time los angeles richardsonian romanesque of course erected 1888 but demolished 1929 had to go Los Angeles, not much for population, 1890 as well, 50,000 people. Interesting. Ooh, let's just zoom in here. We are in Lowell, Massachusetts. This one, 1893 is all I have. I'm assuming that's a completion date for the construction. Uh, population in 1890, 77,000 people. I really like the top here. I don't know if that's an angel or a bird. I can't really tell. And here's some uh, photographs of what's going on up above there. Again, you've got faces and all sorts of 
mud leaf type of uh, designs. Look at even the roof itself was made of stone of some sort. And another visual. Uh, maybe it is a bird, unless it's been changed. I don't know. Um, and they have that similar look too, like we saw in the Calgary one. We have the uh, octagonal cupola with the columns, so the look repeats itself. This one, a beauty. Milwaukee, what a city. Did a, did a video on Milwaukee as well. It's certainly worth a look, worth your time. All right, this was finished in 1895. Don't really have a time frame on the build, just a finished date. Uh, architect Henry C. Koch, Koch, something like that. And here we're being given a different style Flemish Renaissance revival. Uh, the foundation consists of 2,584 white pine piles that were driven into the marshy land surrounding the Milwaukee River. Population at the time, 200,000. So this sitting on white pine piles, we are told, this must be holding up quite nicely. Here's a modern day photo. Um, also worth a mention in Milwaukee, uh, building that does no, no longer stands, the Paps building um, in a very similar style, built in a very similar style. Milwaukee, an old world, um, magnificent city, in my opinion. And a little peek at the, the interior of the Milwaukee City Hall, the atrium area quite the feat of architecture. Not to be outdone, we have the Minneapolis City Hall. Let's zoom in on the little blurb I found. Designed by Long and Keys, 1888, completed in 1909. Population in 1890, uh, 164,000. Um, what a structure though. Magnificent. Also, you are seeing the windows coming all the way down to the ground level. Horse and buggy area era um, quite the juxtaposition with the horse and buggies out front and this thing <laughs> and then we see a little bit of a modern day shot just to give you a sense of really how solid the, these things are and uh, how permanent they are how difficult they would be to tear down a little bit of an interior just to show you the um, level of finish that went on here this very very difficult to complete a coffered ceiling in such a manner you see this height of the ceiling and then the, i mean the photo doesn't really give you give you an, enough of a sense of the detail but the uh, very very high level of detail going on in such a massive massive structure this as well you see how the light fixtures and the ceiling are looking like they're pulling the ceiling down Magnificent, magnificent architecture. Montreal, Canada. Designed by Henri Maurice Perrault and Alexand Alexander Cowper Hutchinson, maybe. Built between 1872 and 1878, very early time period. Again, um, probably not uh, Richardson Romanesque, but certainly worth a mention in the video. Speaking of, um, again, in not quite the same style, but I could not overlook the Philadelphia City Hall. Uh, designed by Scottish-born architect John MacArthur Jr. and Thomas Astick Walter. Done in the Second Empire style, which we're told the Montreal one is done as well. Uh, 1871 to 1901, giving us 30 years to justify the construction of this um, amazing building. Incidentally, I think there were um, there were there were t was talk of tearing this down at some point in Philadelphia's history, um, and they had to abandon the project just because of the scope of the teardown. Um, look, and here they say that in some places the uh, granite and brick walls are up to 22 feet thick. Population 1880, Philadelphia, 847,000. Old world metropolis. But really incredible. Let's have a look at some of the 
interior. Here you have the polished granite look going on. Um, I guess easy to do in the 1870s. Um, you wouldn't even see this. You would never see anything like this in modern day. The, the massive undertaking that you would have to um, go through these, these days to build something of this uh, scale um, makes the whole thing, puts the whole thing in, a, in the un, impossible category. Here we're looking up the under, underside of a dome and again you get a bit of a sense, a bit grainy, but these are the photos that I could find but you get a sense of the magnificence of this structure. And this way up from the street level, and of course you have to put statues on the exterior, because why not? Why wouldn't you? And up here, really an incredible structure. Um, and of course you have this uh, um, octagonal stair, reaching down multiple stories. All right, Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada, 1908. They call this the old gingerbread Romanesque revival city hall. Demolished in 1965. Difficult to find much on this. Almost scrubbed from history, but it did once stand. Richmond, Virginia, Victorian Gothic building, uh, 1894 completed. Uh, Three foot granite walls. Uh, population in 1890, 81,000. Let's have a little bit more of a look. Still standing proud and strong in the modern era and looking like something from a fairy tale. And not to be outdone, the interior also looking like something from Beauty and the Beast or again, otherworldly, uh, fictional, but no, this is real. Uh, this building still stands, standing quite proud. And here we look straight up to the atrium and symmetry really on display here. The magnificence of the old world, not to be denied. Rochester, New York, um, built between 85 and 89, 18. Heavy brown sandstone, metal skeleton, expanded in 83 and in 1907, designed by Harvey Ellis, blah, blah, blah. Population 133 in 1890 in Rochester, New York. From there, it still stands to this day, standing strong. And the interior, polished, what looking like marble. Circular or curved style stairs, very symmetrical, unbelievably symmetrical. 1880s. And there you get a sense of the detail and the magnificence of such a structure. Saginaw, Michigan. The cornerstone was laid in 1891, then the building was completed a year or two after that. Kind of vague, not really sure. Not much left of this, but a couple photographs. Population of Saginaw, 1890, was 46,000 people. And the poor building burned to the ground uh, in 1935, I believe. And here's an old uh, um, newspaper headline and article showcasing the event. St. Louis designed by architects Eckel and Mann, winners of a national competition, of course. All the competitions. Um, began in 1890, completed in 1904. Population St. Louis, 575,000. St. Louis, another old world metropolis hub. Here, just a little peek at what's going on in the interior of this building. Certainly no... Uh, No plainness really to these structures. These were all built to be show pieces. Here we have the exterior really giving you a sense of age. Not looking like a hundred plus year old building again. Looking much, much older. Syracuse, New York. 
1889 to 90, or 1893, a four-year construction time, population at the time, 88,000 people. They loved to build Berkeley, didn't they, back then? Um, this, again, giving you that real sort of uh, popcorn-y look to the stone work. Here we have a nice modern-day view of the front entry. And then you have that polished granite look and that really sort of, like I said, popcorny, bulgy stone look going on. Syracuse. Toronto. Toronto, Canada. Ontario. This one had to be in this video. This one a real classic. Designed by Edward James Lennox, took more than a decade to build, costs 2.5 mil, 1889 to 1899. And there, a modern day view of the front entry. So this little bit here, not looking like much, but when we get a little closer, we really get a sense for how magnificent the structure is. And almost impossible to wrap your head around how that would have gone together in the 1800s. And they love the old, the little faces. All part of that old style. And here reading municipal building. Magnificent structure. Wichita, Kansas. Uh, designed by William Proudfoot, George Bird, 1890 to 1892. Two year, a meager two years to build this. I love the balcony here. Corner, um, circular corner to the building. Of course, the tower. Population at the time, 23,000 people. Do you live in a town with a population close to the size? Could you envision them building this in your town in that time frame with modern day equipment? And now picture that in the 1800s. Winnipeg. So this will be the last one on my list. Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Completed in 1886. Gingerbread building. Again, they're using the same term as the Regina um, City Hall. Um, yeah. 1886 early time period we have a few photos here no longer stands here you can see 1886 to 1962 and there's stories of this coming down in the 60s and you see all sorts of uh, oh this thing was falling apart the uh, foundation was not strong uh didn't it needed to come down, blah, blah, blah. I think we're looking at a cover-up of the old world, destruction um, of, of the evidence like we see throughout the realm. Uh, here we have a rendering of a very early time period again. Um, and now we have a photograph of the front entry area, just to give you an idea of how solid and well put together this thing was. So this has just been a little peek at uh, at uh, predominantly the Richardsonian Romanesque or Romanesque revival style architecture um, used in the city halls around North America. And um, no matter what you think of the situation, the world, or no, there's no lies in history. It is what they tell us it is. Um, if you're in, in that camp, either way. I think we can agree, and I hope we can agree, that these are magnificent structures and certainly worthy of remaining um, standing. Thanks for joining me.